Thank you for that. As you said, uh, with this market sell-off underway, let's bring Peter Schiff in, president of the Euro-Pacific uh, Capital. He's the author of the book, The Real Crash, America's Coming Bankruptcy. There he is, and there's the book. Peter from Stanford, Connecticut today. So forget about health care for a second. We know we won't hear about it till Thursday, but the market, as Lauren said, is pretty messy. And uh, I know we've talked in the past about Europe, but what do you make of this latest sell-off? Well, you know, I think that Europe is actually more of a short-term positive uh, than a negative. People mm -hmm. like to blame the weakness of the U.S. economy and the markets on the problems in Europe. I think our problems are worse. And I think right now the fact that so many people are worried about Europe is actually taking some of the pressure off of our bond market and off of our currency market. And so I think if we had a big drop in the bond market, that would be even more problematic for the U.S. stock market than what's happening right now in Europe. So don't, don't, you know, don't allow people to scapegoat Europe. We have real serious structural problems underlying our own economy, right. and they're not going to go away if Europe solves its problems. Not necessarily any argument there, but the market's down today with, just for the short term. I mean, people are still concerned about Europe. You're just saying if they solve Europe, the problems don't go away. They, they come here. People focus no. on us. It's big. Big. They might actually get worse. In fact, I keep hearing, too, about the fact that, well, gasoline prices are, are falling, oil yeah. prices. Well, they're falling because of the problems in Europe as well and the problems uh, in maybe in the emerging markets because of what's happening in Europe. So, we're, you know, we're catching a break there. So if you're going to acknowledge the fact that the stock market is going down for a problem, oil prices are going down for the same problem. So anything that kind of temporarily improves the situation there would send oil prices back up and we'll, we'll lose that benefit as quickly as we as we got it. it is interesting because we do try to point out every time you see oil prices go down and I know they've gone down below $80 that you have to look at the reason um, you know why they're they're falling and if they're falling because of economic uh, concerns you see oil is at 78.48 as we speak then that's not necessarily um, a good thing but you, the, our economy will benefit the short term we have low interest rates and we have lower oil prices you just think it's going to turn around could it turn around in a real big hurry and move the other well, uh, direction the the low interest rates are, are, are actually our Achilles heel because remember, the low interest rates are temporary, but all the debt that we accumulate is permanent. And so in the short run, we can afford to service the debt only because the interest rates are so low. But what happens when interest rates actually rise? Right. And, you know, Ben Bernanke was actually asked that question uh, in a Senate hearing, and he dismissed uh, the Senate's concerns because he said, well, even if interest rates rise to 1%, it only increases the cost of servicing the debt by $100 billion a year, which $100 billion is not trivial. But... Who said 1% is the cap on interest rates? I remember when that we, was the floor. Right, but what happens asking, if interest rates go to 5%? We, what happens at 7%? We've been I mean, asking it's the not same question, over though, very Peter, well in Spain or Italy. It's you know, not going to work well in America either. And these interest huh? rates have not gone up. We've been asking the same question for years, and the rates have just... And I know uh, you probably say, well, that's because Europe's a mess, and once they solve it, then they'll spike. But you really think so? Like Overnight, interest rates are going to go from where they are, which is basically zero, or on a 10-year, 1.5%, they're just going to spike up. Uh, very, very quickly. Well, it might not. It might not happen overnight. But what if it took six months? They're still going to get there. Where? We Where's still there? can't afford to service the debt when interest rates go up. And just remember, it wasn't a few years ago. People thought real estate prices would never fall. That's right. why nobody was worried about Hush. a financial crisis yes. or the house or the banking system because people were operating under a phony premise that real estate prices would never fall. What, what well, now the, they're operating under the same premise that before, interest rates will never rise. Before I let you go, where's there no, in terms of rising interest rates? What you, how much of a spike are you talking about? Well, eventually they're going to go significantly higher. I mean, yeah. 5%, 10%, maybe higher than that. And the fact of the matter is we can't even afford 5%. <laughs> which historically would still be a low a level of interest rates. For the federal government to borrow at 5%, that's historically low. Okay. But we're measuring that against numbers when the federal government was in much better shape fiscally. It's so given the situation now, the federal, the federal government should be borrowing at a high cost, cost relative to history, not, not average. And so rates have got a long way to go up, and we have a huge price to pay when that happens. Right. It provides us a perfect lead into our next guest, Peter Schiff, taking a break from his live radio show to join us, which we appreciate.